Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, we're gonna continue on with our discussion of SOLIDWORKS assemblies, and I'm gonna cover advanced as well as mechanical mates. And those are very specific mates, but they're gonna be helpful for us whenever we're dealing with moving parts, which is a perfect candidate for our vise and riser assembly. And what I wanna simulate is that whenever I move one of these vise grips, that the other one is mirrored or symmetric. Likewise, I wanna be able to represent how far I can open my vise without them falling off the track, as well as not overlap and get to a zero point. So I have to set limits to these vise grips. And then lastly, I have to make sure that whenever I turn my specific hex key, or sorry, when I turn my hex key, I have a specific value set to its pitch. So for example, if this is an M8 by one screw, I want it to move one millimeter in distance every time it makes a revolution. So that said, I'm going to start up my mate tool or my mate function, and I'm gonna uh, select the icon of the paperclip inside the assembly tab. And I accidentally had one of these components selected, so I'm going to clear that. And you probably didn't notice this uh, while we were dealing with the other mates, but all of those different mates that we were using, whether they be concentric, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, or concentric, they're all centrally located in this first standard tab. Well, there's other mates that are inside SOLIDWORKS and they're going to be separate in or separated in these different tabs. For example, I have the advanced tab. So go ahead and click on advanced. And whenever we were, we were dealing with the previous mates, I was able to just select different faces and SOLIDWORKS was smart enough to recognize, hey, this should be coincident or hey, this should be concentric. Well, this is gonna be a little bit different and I'm gonna encourage you in a better practice that whenever we're using advanced for mechanical mates that we select the mate that we want to apply before clicking on different features. And that's just gonna make it a little bit easier for us as we move through these mates. So for example, the first mate that I want to apply is I want to make sure that these are symmetric. And I'm gonna select the second icon, which is symmetric. <clears throat> And you'll notice that opened up a different um, little window here inside of this mate properties uh, tab. And all this is asking for is what plane do we want to mate this symmetric to, as well as the entities that have to be uh, symmetric. So this is a little bit of a, a, a mixed bag or a tricky conversation when we're choosing what our symmetry plane is, because we have to establish what the zero point is or the center of the entire assembly. Well, lucky for us, we already established that when we brought in the first part. So when I imported that riser, we made sure that we selected the green check mark. And what that did is it linked and locked the riser to the center of the assembly. So now if I access the assembly's front, top, and right planes, they're going to be at the center of that riser, which is a good point of symmetry. So we can access the assembly's front, front, uh, front top, and right planes in two different ways. Well, we can either find and locate this completed vise and riser assembly, and there's the icon of the assembly there. And just like if we're opening up and editing a sketch or a feature, there's a black arrow that I can expand the feature tree. So if I click on this black arrow, it'll actually expand all of my components as well as the planes. Uh, I can also hit the C key, and that's going to toggle that uh, expanded feature tree because you'll notice that it got temporarily uh, disabled when we opened up the mate function. So I'm hitting the CK, C key and that's uh, toggling it back and forth. And in that uh, symmetry plane, I'm gonna select one of these planes. So I can hover over these planes inside of my assembly and locate one that's going to be a good reference point. So if I hover over the right plane, that's not really gonna be a good point of symmetry, nor is the top. But when I hover over the front plane, well, hey, that looks like it's in the center of the part. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the front plane. And then the entities that I'm gonna select uh, to mate as uh, symmetric to each other will be the face of the vice grip on the left and the face of the vice grip on the right. And you'll notice that it actually moved uh, already in its position so that when it opens and closes, it'll move uh, in symmetry. So I'm gonna just hit the green check mark after I have all these components selected. And then if I click, hold, and drag on one of these uh, vice grips, it'll actually move in symmetry, which is a good starting point. But you'll notice that they can still fall off the track or that they're gonna overlap like that. So I have to set up a distance mate, 
and that's going to turn into a limit mate uh, because we're going to set a minimum and a maximum value to where this won't overlap past zero and it won't go past uh, four inches when it's extended. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and open up my distance mate, which is going to be the second to last option in this advanced mate tab. So it's the two arrows that are pointed in opposite directions, and I have a line and another line on either side. So I'm going to select that distance mate, and then you'll notice that I have options to uh, set either a maximum or a minimum value. So my minimum value is going to be zero because I don't want it to overlap past zero. And then likewise, I want to set my maximum value to four inches so that it doesn't fall off the track. So I'm going to type in four IN. And then the mate selections that I have to now apply are again going to be the face of the vice grip on the left and then the face of the vice grip on the right. And then I should be able to hit the green check mark. So now I can move these away from each other or collapse them and they won't go off the track and they won't overlap. So that's that distance mate and it's going to turn into a limit mate by setting a maximum and a minimum value. Okay, now the last mate that we have to apply is going to be uh, in two steps and that's going to be this threaded mechanical mate and the way that we're going to set this up is we have to apply a standard mate first to make sure that there's a distance from the face of this hex key to the face of this uh, slider and then we can apply the revolutions and that when it travels it's going to open and close in that uh, thread pitch interval. So I'm going to go back into my standard tab and inside my standard tab uh, I'm going to make a, a distance mate by selecting the face of this uh, hex key to the face of that um, slider for the uh, vice grip. So much like the uh, advanced mate where I had the two arrows going in either direction, I have a distance mate inside of my standard, but it doesn't allow me to apply uh, a minimum and maximum value. So that's how this one differs just slightly. So I'm going to select on this face here, and I'm going to select on this face here, and then I'm going to choose, uh, I believe it was 22 millimeters. And that was the distance that that hex key was actually uh, protruding past the face of the, uh, of the vice slider. So I want to have this 22 millimeters. You have to select the um, distance mate again. It's two arrows going opposite directions with a line on either side. And that's going to be located in the standard. And that's, again, different than the advanced because I can't set a minimum and maximum. So once I apply that, I can now move over to the mechanical mates. So I'm going to go to mechanical mate. And I have to select any cylindrical surface on my hex rod. And then I have to select the inner diameter of the uh, vice base. So go ahead and expand this out to its maximum extent. And then inside the mechanical mates, let's go ahead and select the screw mate, which is going to be the second to last mate inside of the mechanical tab. So we'll start up the screw mate. And I just want to talk about threads really quick in that there is a difference between inch threads as well as millimeter threads or metric threads. Uh, so we have like a, in an inch example, we have a 20, or sorry, a uh, quarter by 20 tap or thread. And that quarter by 20 thread, that just means that we have a quarter inch diameter and that that thread uh, pitch is going to be 20 threads per inch. And that differs a little bit from when we're dealing with metric threads because we have M8, which is the metric eight, eight millimeters by one millimeter. And that's just the distance that it will travel per revolution. So that's one millimeter per revolution with an eight millimeter diameter thread. So we have to be able to choose between these different millimeter, or different types of threads. So in our instance, we have to now choose, instead of like revolutions per millimeter, we're going to go distance per revolution. So select distance per revolution, and that's going to be one millimeter. You might have to type in one mm, one mm. And then the mate selection is going to be any cylindrical surface on this rod, and then the inner uh, hole or cylindrical surface of the vice base. And nothing's gonna really happen. You're not gonna see anything move. But when I apply this, you'll notice that as I twist this, look at that, it's very minor, it's minute, but 
the vice is actually collapsing in on itself. And if I open it, it'll actually open accordingly. And if I just grab these, you'll also see that the hex key is moving pretty quickly. But this is a very, very good starting point to setting up work holding that I can now draw from when I'm using other components. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and end this video right here. So go ahead and file, save as, rebuild the document, and then I'll just save it over our existing uh, assembly. And in the next video, we'll talk about putting together some other components and then making an exploded view ready to be imported into a drawing.